So welcome to the another video of data structures using Java. In this video, we will be solving a problem called as isomorphic string. This is again easiest problem. So highly recommend you to watch till the end to get a clear approach on how we can solve this problem. So let's understand what exactly the question mean is. So we have given a two string S and T and we need to check whether the two given string S and T are isomorphic or not. Now the question comes, what do you mean by isomorphic? So this is that the two strings S and T are called as isomorphic if the character of S can be mapped with character of T, right? So let's understand it more clearly with the given example. So if you see that we have given a two string S and T, so S contains a string egg and T contain a string called as add. So what I can say that whenever I come across E, I can map it with A, which means this E, it changed with A. So whenever I come across E in a string S, it has, it can be replaced with A, right? Now I come across G, which means G can be mapped with D. So I have mapped this G with this D. So anywhere in my string S, if I come across G, I can replace with D, right? So if we see here, again, there is a G and again, G has a D, which means the, both the strings are isomorphic. Now, if you see example, this one S and T, I have the paper and I have the title. Now this P is mapped with T. So whenever I come across the P, it can be replaced with T. If you observe carefully that here is a P and which can be replaced with T. And here is a P which is also mapped to T. Okay, this is true. Then I have A, A is mapped with I. So whenever I come across A, it can be replaced with I. Then I come across E, E can be replaced with L and R is can be replaced with E. So this is again the isomorphic string. But if you observe these examples, what it happens see? Now F is, ma F is mapped with B and O is mapped with A. Now what I say that whenever I come across any O in the string S, yes, it has to be mapped with A. But if you observe carefully that this O is mapped with R. How this is possible? I am saying that O is mapped with A and here you are saying that O is mapped with R. No, this is not possible because the single character can be mapped only to the single character of string T, right? You cannot map a single character to the two different character of string T. So I hope so you understood what exactly the isomorphic string is. Now let's try to understand how we can build the intuition behind this. Now see, what I have done over here is that the X character is mapped with B, okay? So whenever I come across X in string S, I will be replaced with by B. Now A is mapped with A, right? So this A is mapped with this A. Now what is happening, see? Now this D is trying to map with B, right? This D is trying to map with B, but my B is already mapped to X. My B is already mapped to the X, which means you're trying to allocate B first to the X and first to the D. Is it possible to map a single character to the two different characters? No. Therefore, again, this is not a isomorphic string, right? So I hope so. Now you got the clear meaning of what does exactly the isomorphic string is. Now let's check how we can approach this problem. So what I have took is, I have to go to example that is paper and title. We got two strings S and T and I have maintained the hash. Now this hash mainly maintains which character is mapped to the which character of T. Basically the character of S is mapped to the character of T. So in order to maintain that record, I'm using the hash in the both the side. Now the question comes, why I can't use a single hash? Why I'm using the two different hash for the two different string? Let's understand in detail. Now. I come across a P, right? I come across P. First of all, I will check. Is my P mapped with anyone? Is my P mapped with anyone? No. Initially, all the values are zero, which mainly indicates none of the characters mapped with anyone. And again, here you can see that all are zero, which means none of the characters present in my T is mapped with anyone. So I come across the P. I can see that P is equal to zero, which means P is not mapped with anyone else. Therefore, I can map this P to T, right? If you see carefully, here I have P and the first letter is T. But can I directly map T to P? No, because I need to check that whether that T is not mapped with anyone else. Because if that T is already mapped to the someone, you cannot map that T to with P. So I can see that T is not mapped with anyone. Therefore, I can simply map T T to my P. So simply now I can mark it as one because T is already marked to the P. Now I come across A. I will check is my A mapped with anyone else? No, A is not mapped with anyone else. So I can map A. But to whom I can map? I can map A to I. But before I map I to my A, I need to check whether my I is mapped to any other character. No, I is not mapped to any other character. Therefore, I can simply map I to my A and I will replace with this one because now I is mapped to some other character. Now again, I come across P and I will check. Is my P marked to someone else? Yes. See, P is already marked to T. So we don't need to do anything with this P. Now I come across E. I will check. Is my E mapped with anyone else? No, my E is not mapped with anyone else. Therefore, I can map my E. But to whom? I can mark this T, E to L. But before I map L to my E, I need to check whether my L is mapped. No, which means I can simply mark my L and I can simply mark it as one because now L is already marked. Now I come across R, I will check, is my R marked with anyone else? No, I is not, R is not marked. 
to whom I need to market? I need to market as E. Is my E marked with anywhere else? No. So simply I will mark it as 1 and I will mark it as T. So which means all the characters present in my S is mapped with T in proper order. Therefore, can I say that these are isomorphic strings? These are isomorphic string because every character is mapped with every other character of yes only for the single time. If you observe carefully that P is marked as T, so wherever the P comes, it can be replaced with T. A is marked with I, so wherever A comes, it will always be replaced with I. Right? Mm -hmm. So I hope so that at least you got a clear idea about it. Now let's understand the second example so that you can build more intuition. Now again I will do the same thing. What I did is I first of all I came across X. Now I will check. Is my X marked check marked with anyone else? No, all are zero. Initially, all are zero, which means none of the characters is marked. Therefore, x is also not marked with anyone. I can mark it, but to whom I can mark it? I can mark it to b. But I need to check it. Is my b mapped with anyone else? No. I can simply replace it to one, and I can map x with my b. Now I come across as a, and I need to check. Is my a mapped with anyone else? No. A is not mapped with anyone else. To whom I can map this? I can map this with a. But before I map this a, I need to check. Is this a mapped with anyone else? No. So simply, I will replace it as one. And I will replace this A with A. So this A is mapped with other A. Now I come across D. Now I need to check. Is my D mapped with anyone else? No. D is not mapped with anyone else. So to whom I can map? I can map with B. But before I map B to my D, I need to check. Is my B mapped with anyone else? Yes. B is already mapped. Therefore, we cannot map any character to my D. I cannot map any of the, cannot map my any character to D. Now I come across as C. I need to check. Is my C mapped with anyone else? No. C is not mapped to anyone else. Therefore, I can map my C to A. But I need to check whether that A is already mapped or not. Yes, A is already mapped. Therefore, I cannot map anything to my C as well. Now, what I will do is, if you observe carefully that, if we observe carefully that A is mapped with A, X is mapped with B. But these two character is not mapped with anyone else, which means these two strings is not an isomorphic. These are not two isomorphic because every character present in my S is not mapped with other character present in my T. So what we can do is we can simply map all the character present in my S with all the characters present in my T. And at any point, if the single character present in my S is not mapped, therefore they are not called as a isomorphic. So I hope so you got to know the intuition behind solving this problem. Simple, what we are going to do is we are going to map every character present in my S will be character with T. But before I map that character with S, I need to check that if that character is already mapped with someone else. Right? So now let's check how we can write a code for this. So what I did is I simply declared two hash. One hash is for the string S. So this is for string S and this is for string T, right? Because what is happening before we map the character present in my T, I need to check is it that character mapped with any other character. So initially this is kept as false and initially this is kept as zero. Now what I'm doing is I'm simply traversing the string S and T and the length of S is equal to length of T, right? So we don't need to worry about it. So what I did is C1 is nothing but the character present in my S and C2 is nothing but character present in my T. And I checked is my character present in C1 is mapped with any else? If it is zero, which means it is not mapped, right? If this condition true, which means the character present in my S is not mapped with anyone else. Now I need, I can map it, right? Which means let's suppose if you come across here and D is equal to zero, which means D is not mapped. Now I can map my D to the B, but before I map my D, sorry, before I map my B to the D, I need to check is my B map? That's what I did over here. I need to check before I map any character present in my T, it should be false, which means that character is not mapped with any other character. If it is. I can simply map C2 to my C1 and I can mark as C2 is equal to true now because what I can say that if B is already marked from 0 I did as 1 which means the B is already marked now we cannot use that B going forward. This is what we did right and once we come out of loop I will check at any point right what does this loop indicates that again I am going to traverse this hash table and I will check at any point if I get 0 I will simply return as false because these are not an isomorphic string since all the characters present in my string yes is not mapped with T. Right? So this is what we did over here. Now let's move on to the ID and check how we can write the code for this. So this is the exact code what we saw on the iPad is what I wrote over here. So first of all, I got the length of my string. I declare the hash which is of size 256 and I initialize with 0 which simply indicates none of the character is marked initially. Again, I declare, declare the boolean map, hash map and I again with the size of 256 and initially marked as false since none of the character present in my T is mapped with anyone else. And simply what I did is I checked the character present at S is not mapped with anyone else. Okay. I now need to map the character present in my T. But before I map the character present in my T, I need to check it has to be the false, which means that character is not mapped with any other character present in the S. If this condition becomes true, I can map that. 
and finally again i'm running the loop to check even if the single character present in my s contain the hash value 0 it means that character is not mapped with anyone else therefore this is not an isomorphic string and if this condition does not get true simply i can return as true right if you try to submit this code you can see that it is already got accepted so i hope so that you came to know that how we can solve this problem that is isomorphic string just in case if you are new to our channel do subscribe the channel for more such informative videos